Um, so thank you for that introduction once again, and also Ms. Bavuma, thank you for um, also uh, introducing everyone to EndNote because I think um, you, you've been a tremendous help also in that. Right, so just to go to referencing, so why we actually do referencing, uh, we, we reference the sources that we use and it avoids plagiarism and also enhances credibility to our work. Um, so, for example, plagiarism comes in also, you'll probably be told at the end when you submit your thesis or dissertation, there needs to be a summary of Turnitin. And Turnitin also um, will pick up any uh, types of plagiarism, but by actually using or a referencing, um, you can avoid a whole lot of that. So that certain statements that you make are not um, cited or because uh, that can happen so that everything is cited. So the various sources that you can use for your research. Um, I'm sure you're aware of the literature on the topic and I think Ms. Bavuma also um, touched on that. Um, certain journal articles, books, documents um, that you can use and, and it's very often freely available or um, sometimes you can see that it's um, not available, but then you can always go um, via Ms. Bavuma and um, she does also have access or with her colleagues into library loan um, is, is really helpful there. Um, there are certain theories that one can use, so you've got your articles and books um, predominantly for that, and anecdotal evidence that is definitely also having a place uh, specifically when it comes um, to the problem statement. So there are various ways of referencing um, and we always refer to in-text referencing and then the bibliography. Um, and I've just put out three different styles just to give you a bit of an overview of how they differ and sometimes how they're very much similar. Um, there are much more referencing styles, uh, but these are mostly, from my experience, mostly used at the Faculty of Health Sciences. So um, if you look at APA, so I've just put out a statement about uh, enhancing patient safety in primary healthcare requires the assessment of safety culture. And as you can see for the first, um, I used APA, and as you can see here in the bibliography, that's how it, it usually looks. Then Harvard is quite similar, as you can see, um, but it, it has basically first time citing that reference. It's got all the authors there. Uh, and as you can see, it's quite similar in terms of, um, in terms of just the style. Um, and then Vancouver, Vancouver uses the numbering um, and you can see that the referencing style is quite different. So um, to do that manually, it's quite hard, I must say, uh, from my experience. So therefore, uh, we do have reference managers. So um, there was a previous question on whether EndNote is the the best one to use. Um, I must say, Mendeley, it works quite similar to EndNote and also within Word, there is a, a referencing tool and I'm sure there are also a lot of other referencing tools out there. Um, from my experience though, EndNote is very much more advanced. So um, you can do a lot more with EndNote um, and also it, it you can there's lots of functions like deduplication um, that and it works quite well with the databases that we have at the university. So um, EndNote is a commercial reference management software package and you use that to manage bibliographies and references. And you can use it not just for your dissertation, but even if you write a short report or an essay. Um, and later on, if not part of your dissertation, you can also use it when you write up your work in uh, terms of an article. It helps you to save time 
and also um, you can format citations. So I felt specifically if you, for example, have different styles of referencing, then it's very easy if you've done it via EndNote because you all have, the, you can easily change that style as you've seen in the previous slide. For example, if they want APA over Harvard, you quickly just change it and it will um, work out that way. It also helps you to save time and it's freely downloadable. And I want to kindly refer to Ms. Bavuma's um, slides there, where she indicated in quite a lot of detail where, how you can download it. So how does it then work? Um, so EndNote, in EndNote, the very first step, and I didn't know that when I downloaded it, was to create a library. So um, I have tried to kind of in that uh, slide, um, in the screenshot, you can see that if you click on file and you uh, click new, you can then um, have a new library. And the nice thing is when you now import, very often from your uh, databases, it automatically already then imports it to that uh, library. So you can name that library, um, for example, with the title of your um, topic or your research, and um, you just keep it on your desktop. One of the things maybe that I would like to mention is, and I agree with uh, Ms. Bavuma there, is uh, from my experience, don't, if once you've um, copy, once you've created a library, please don't move it. Um, I've done that once, then I thought, okay, I'm, I'm kind of like done now with the article and I have used the, the references. And when I then moved it into a folder, I lost all my um, references that were in. So um, yeah, so one wants to just keep it either on a desktop. You can obviously always um, make a copy of it, but um, just be very careful there. Um, so you can import references after you've created a library either manually by adding a new reference and I hope you can see it. I'm not sure if the slides are big enough on your site, uh, but there is an, a function there where you can click on and you can basically add a new reference and you can just um, drag and drop, I would almost say, the the PDF that you found into it. So that is a way. But you can also do it en electronically from the databases. Um, and the next slide shows you that. So um, as Ms. Bavuma also showed, there are various databases that we have. I just put a link in for you. Um, I've used EBSCOhost. EBSCOhost is one of my favorite databases. Uh, but a lot of databases, they work very well with EndNote. So as you can see, you've put in your keywords and you found, um, in, in my case, it was like over 11,000 references. So if you now want to import those references into um, your EndNote library, you can click on that little folder there where, it's, where it says export results and then it will bring you to uh, a next page as you can see there the export manager so in the export manager you put in your um your email address and then you must just be careful to click the correct format so endnote works very well with the ris or ris um format so if you click on that, you it, you will be sent an email. Sometimes it takes a little a little longer, uh, but usually within a couple of minutes you will receive an email. Uh, and then from that email, when you open it, you can it automatically exports those references into your library. Um, this is how an example of an EndNote library works. This was a, a systematic review that I did um, quite, quite recently. I think it was last year. Um, and you can see that there's multiple functions in and multiple little things to click on. So as you can see on the on the right, no, the left, the upper part, it says all references. So what it does, whatever references you import, 
uh, either from your data um, bases or you do it manually, it will create a library. And so it, your, your references will forever be there unless you, you tell the end, end nodes to remove them. And then what you can do, and I, I saw also in Ms. Bavuma's um, slide that she did, was to make create groups, basically. And if you create groups, um, you can do it per chapter. I saw what uh, Ms. Bavuma did. Or you can maybe say um, proposal, make one of it proposal, and you just add uh, import all those references and you can very easily do that by clicking on the reference and then with shift for example um, you can just move them and like drag them into but they will always be still in your library um, and I think that you can also see uh, if you look up that it is in the APA sixth uh, referencing style so that's the reference Thing style that uh, will be used. And I just want to now show you quickly, and uh, Ms. Bavuma touched on that as well. So once you've downloaded EndNote, there should be, when you open Word, a sort of, I think they call it plug-in, where it um, reflects EndNote. Well, in, in my version, as you can see, is still X9, but um, from Ms. Bavuma, she indicated that we have moved already to version 20. So um, if you click on that in Word, you can make like a sentence or, or anything, and now you want to put your reference. Um, if you go to the, the, the left where it says insert citation, uh, it will then take you to EndNote. And as you can see, that's the, the thing that popped up and you can then just look or search for that reference, which will be in your library, and um, you can then just add it basically, and then it will appear like that. Now, again, if you want to change the style, you can easily do that. So as you can see, somewhere in the middle up, it says style APA 6, and there's a drop down menu where you can choose what referencing style you can use. So it's actually quite easy um, to use. Now, what I must um, admit is that I, when I was downloading EndNote, I definitely had a lot of help from Ms. Bavuma because some of the PDF full text are not available. And then um, it was, it became very handy to email her and see um, our quite recent scoping review. So I was able to manage to find about 95% of, of my references, which really is, is really wonderful. Um, but there are also quite a lot of tools and tips that you can use. So the University of Pittsburgh um, also has uh, a library guide where they um, have some simple steps um, if you're not sure. For me, always YouTube is the way to go if I don't know um, a thing quickly or I just want to quickly um, see how things are working in EndNote. As I said, EndNote is quite advanced, so it took me a little bit of time to get used to it, but once you're used to it, um, it's really a very helpful tool. Um, so, and I hope that um, it will also help you a lot in uh, when you are doing, conducting your research and also writing up your, your proposal, your chapters, and also your articles. Thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you so much, um, Vilma, for that presentation. Then over to the delegates. Any questions for Vilma there? Nothing on the floor here. Can I just see the questions there, please? Um, Although the referencing styles you've mentioned are the most used in the Faculty of Health Sciences, does one requ does one inquire from his or her department supervisor as to which referencing style to use, or one can choose their own? Um, thank you very much for that question. Good question. 
Um, I think you can definitely um, check with your supervisors um, which one they prefer. The one thing I must say though is when you work on your site, uh, very often they don't have those references. So they will comment or make comments on your references perhaps, but then from your side you just have to kind of fix them. Um, but I think it is always good to consult with your supervisors. But as Ms. Bavuma said, um, the university um, supports um, the use of EndNote very much. I hope that answered your question.